Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Tchaikovsky, and I'm back with my plans and pans. And back in Washington, the last two weeks, we have had district work periods um, working out of um, my 9th Congressional District back home and in my uh, office and in my home. Um, and here I am now, we're all back in, in Washington to get going on the legislative agenda. I came back um, a bit early, as did almost 80 other members, to join the President of the United States uh, at the White House to celebrate, and yes, it was a celebration of the bipartisan Safe Communities Act, which the President signed into law. This is on gun violence. And as I've reported a, a number of times now, it made some major changes. For the first time in three decades, we've been able to pass and get signed into law. Some things to control guns. Is it everything that we wanted? You know that it isn't. Um, given what happened in, in Highland Park, another mass shooting, um, we know that it still doesn't deal with everything. But I just want to emphasize that it's very important, and I say this as a longtime organizer, to have a win, to be able to um, pass legislation that would have these um, red flag laws and other crisis intervention programs, that is to make sure that people that we know have a, a history of um, gun violence to keep the guns away from them um, and make sure that the people that shouldn't have those weapons don't get them. Um, it's also the boyfriend loophole that says that's not only just uh, spouses or someone that you have a child with, but any kind of romantic relationship or relationship, a partner, um, if that person has been convicted of domestic violence, they can't have a gun. It can be taken away. Um, we, we know that we're gonna increase scrutiny and in background checks for um, young people up to age 21 now, um, although that wouldn't unfortunately have affected in any case the, uh, the, the shooter in Highland Park. Um, I think he was uh, 21, um, and uh, would also crack down on these uh, straw purchases, the ability of the wrong people to get guns and then to pass them on to people who will use them for nefarious purposes. You know, my office has been swamped with, uh, with phone calls, as you can imagine, maybe some of you that are listening now, um, to calling that we have to act. So this was a beginning, and I wanna make sure that this win, this change in the politics of gun, on gun violence is acknowledged and praised and celebrated. Three decades, as I said, we were not able, 30 years, we would not be able to pass legislation and the president finally signed it into law. And he, it was a very, it was really, um, it was celebratory, but it was somber as well, the speech, because he said from the get-go that we still had to do more. I thought it was really a great speech. Kamala Harris spoke, as did a doctor from Uvalde, pretty young doctor talking about what he had seen. When I came back to my office, I had a Zoom call with some 70 women from an organization called Jack Pack, um, the Joint Action Committee um, that has dealt with a number of issues, um, including gun violence for many, many years. And they are, as all these other gun violence groups, um, continuing their crusade, their fight, and we are going to continue to win. A group of, I heard 300 people from Highland Park or the Highland Park area are coming to Washington, D.C. 
They're going to be meeting with members of Congress. I look forward to a meeting with them. And also, not all 300, but a, a number of people. And then on Wednesday, having a, a, a rally, a, a, a demonstration, focusing on assault weapons and the need for a ban on assault weapons. You know, the, the, the fact of any civilian buying an assault weapon really needs to be questioned and ultimately stopped. There is no reason for a weapon of mass destruction, a military style weapon to be in the hands of civilians. Um, and so that's the next step. We uh, think we have just about, but not quite enough votes in the House of Representatives. And I'm hoping as soon as possible, we're gonna be able to um, pass that, uh, that, that bill. So I look forward to seeing people from Highland Park. We continue to pray for the eight-year-old um, who um, is, seems to be recovering from this horrible shooting, though it's clear that he will never walk again. Um, funerals, memorials um, have, been, have been held all over the community. And let's never forget the shootings that go on all around Chicago. Um, we call them kind of the everyday shootings. The access to guns of any sort has really been uh, devastating to so many people and so many communities. So it is definitely time to take, uh, take, to take action. Wanted to just point out some of the, uh, the, the facts about uh, gun violence in the United States, which uniquely has all these guns. We have 18 times more guns in the United States of America than in all of the rest of the world combined. Um, we are 4.2% of the population and 46% of, uh, of all the guns. Um, more guns than people in the United States um, and uh, in Japan. So we, we saw the, uh, the, the, the death of the former prime minister. You know how many people were killed by guns in Japan last year? 10. You know how many people were killed in the United States by guns? And that includes suicides. 40,500 people. 10 in Japan, 40,500 in the United States of America. We have to do better. So I also um, wanted to talk to you about consumer protection. You know, that's kind of my bailiwick. Um, I chair the um, subcommittee on consumer protection and commerce in the House of, of Representatives, and have worked very hard on products that are dangerous to children. And uh, one of those um, products in, in, in the past by Fisher Price, brand name, um, was the Rock and Play, where 97 children died in, in, that, in that product, uh, for, for, for thought to be safe for babies. Um, and it took a long time. Fisher Price knew about that, except didn't take action until finally, finally, finally it was recalled. So why does it take so long? Because we have a bad provision in the Consumer Product Safety Act, which actually requires that even though information about a product that has been hurting children or people has to go to the um, Consumer Product Safety Commission, it cannot be, that information cannot be released to the public because of Section 6B, which says essentially there has to be a negotiation with the company that may be taking lives. So Senator Blumenthal and I have sent now another communication to Fisher Price 
because they have another product now, still called a rocker, um, that we have seen 13 babies die. Um, and again, you know, to really get to the um, warnings um, and, and finally to get the recalls that we need, we have this section 6B that we need to get rid of. But meantime, we did get a letter back and oh, Fisher-Price is telling us, well, then the people didn't read all the warnings that were there. Basically, not our fault. 13 children now have, have died and we're gonna continue our efforts to make sure that uh, um, that's 13 too many children and products like that obviously um, are not safe enough for our, for our babies. But mostly we need to make sure that consumers can be informed. And of course we need to make sure that the recall process is much speedier than it is. So I'm definitely on the case. Let's talk more about, uh, about abortion. So the president last week issued a very important executive order. Um, you know, the Supreme Court made its decision that access to abortion in the United States um, previously for um, decades now under Roe v. Wade would be overturned and not available. And that states can make their own decisions. And of course, we are fortunate to live in the state of Illinois and to have a legislature and a governor that respects women and that uh, makes sure that abortions are legal in our state. And, you know, I never want to stop saying, remember that so that um, people feel like they can access abortions right now in Illinois. It is not illegal, despite what the Supreme Court uh, did. But the executive order that the uh, president put out protects medication abortion access. Increasingly, women are relying on safe medication to, at early stages in particular, to have an abortion. And so we wanna make sure that that's safe. I mean, you know, we, we have to make sure that we're not gonna see some of these extremists wanting to go through the mail to find out what you might be receiving in the mail in the way of, of medication. We have to um, protect medication abortions. The executive order also guarantees emergency care. Um, they, uh, what he wants to do is to upgrade the guidelines from the Emergency Medical Treatment Act, which has been in force for some time, to make sure that uh, providers and hospitals understand that they have to take care of women who are in extreme situations of, uh, you know, dire health situations, that they can protect them regardless of the reason, which could be, in fact, a form of botched abortion, um, a, a woman who desperately needs to have care at that moment, um, and, and to make sure that we protect all emergency care. Also, um, want to, um, strengthen the ability to get contraception. You know, um, really, I think that uh, the same Supreme Court justices would, uh, and we've already heard it from Clarence Thomas, would want to stop contraception altogether. Um, but we um, want to make sure and um, remind um, insurance companies that under the Affordable Care Act, that uh, most contraception is supposed to be covered. Um, we want to make sure that emergency contraception, Plan B, uh, uh, is, is still available, that IUDs and other devices are available. Um, want to have uh, more um, protection of clinics so that they aren't under attack, especially um, in, in states where 
other kinds of services. Let's remember that many of these clinics um, do all kinds of preventive care, et cetera, and we want to make sure that uh, the clinics are uh, protected. Um, we wanna make sure that there are more resources and information for consumers who want information uh, about abortion and related issues. And, and that's why there is a website called reproductiverights.gov. You can go there and you can find out what may be available um, in you know, your state. What other state can you go to? Um, other things about reproductive health care. That's a good place to go. Also, we want to, on the president's executive order, um, protect the security of uh, any um, client, anybody who um, looks up information about uh, abortion, um, that uh, would uh, get an abortion so that all those privacy records and healthcare records are protected. And the president has called on the Federal Trade Commission to develop a protocol to ha help make that uh, make sure that is uh, is possible. And finally, in the executive order, the president said he wants to make sure the right to travel is protected, um, so that states suddenly don't say that uh, Americans can't go from one state to another for whatever reason, for, uh, for, for health care and including for, to exercise their uh, ability to have an abortion. So, you know, this executive order definitely does um, make, make progress, but we have to continue to fight and we have to take that fight all the way to the election. We have to elect people who support a woman's right to make her own decision and control her own body and the right to privacy. We can do this. Everyone needs to vote and vote for people who will protect that right. I was very um, proud this week to get um, a, a, an award by a very prestigious um, organization, um, the National Association of Community Health Centers. These are wonderful places that are served regardless of income, regardless of immigration status, People get the health care. Many of them even have dental care um, that is available at those clinics. And the thing I love, I've been to many of them, um, is that um, they are so beautiful. Many of them, you know, look like any doctor's office, um, and all patients are treated um, with such dignity and respect and good quality healthcare, um, mainly, um, you know, the, the more primary care, they don't uh, also do um, surgeries, but they, they do the, uh, the, the daily preventive care and do referrals. I was very proud to get that award at a ceremony at the uh, Heartland Clinic on Devon Avenue in, in Chicago. Um, these community health um, centers, um, uh, deal uh, with 1.5 million patients combined, have um, over 400 um, various clinics in the state of Illinois run by a uh, large number of different organizations. So it's a real treasure that we have in Illinois and many of these are also around the, uh, around the country um, to help people who really need it. The other um, thing that I did this week um, was attend an event sponsored by uh, Assyrian women. Uh, Assyrians are an ethnic group. We have many in um, the Chicago area in the 9th Congressional District. There is a large gap group of Assyrians. In fact, there were so many um, they're mainly um, come from the Middle East. There was actually a polling place 
for the Iraq War in, uh, in, in Skokie, Illinois. Um, there are a lot of Assyrians, mostly, uh, mostly Christian, and a wonderful new leader in our community, um, Atur Sargon, who is now a trustee in, the, uh, in Lincolnwood, I think uh, uh, maybe the first Assyrian, I believe, that was elected to, uh, to, to office, uh, certainly in our area. And she invited 25 women to talk about women's empowerment, 25, um, 25 Assyrian women, how they can both represent their own community at the national level, but also how they can participate in their community. Um, I hope to highlight various different ethnic groups that are in our district because we are really blessed by the diversity that we have, people coming really from every corner of the world. Um, I also wanted, of course, to end with COVID. Um, what you're hearing around the country is that there's a, a spike in many places. These um, new variants, very contagious, can get to people who have been vaccinated, uh, even vaccinated you know, fairly, fairly recently. Um, so you need to be careful. Now, the reality is in the city of Chicago and in Cook County, our numbers are actually going down. It is actually getting better. Um, I think, you know, we have been taking um, precautions and we should absolutely con continue to do, to do this. Um, but there, throughout Illinois, there has been an increase. Um, hospitalizations um, are, are now the um, more than we have seen in the last five months. Um, we're seeing, you know, too significant a number of deaths. Um, at least 149 of the uh, latest patients are in intensive care. And that is the uh, most since um, the first week in March. So, you know, it's not it's not uh, done done yet. I know that Chuck Schumer is uh, the the uh, Democratic leader in the Senate is not here right now because he has uh, has COVID. Um, you know, no one is too special to um, get infected, and so you definitely want to. Um, take every precaution that you can have, particularly in indoor settings. Think about wearing a mask. Anyway, it's uh, dis despite the, the heartaches that, that we have because of gun violence in our own neck of the, uh, of the woods um, and um, all around the Chicago area, um, we continue to move forward to be strong and brave and uh, just keep on trying to make our community and our country better. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.